This sermon is titled Led by the Spirit. Be enriched as you listen. Last Sunday we were talking about being led by the Holy Spirit. And we we emphasize the fact that as believers, all of us have the privilege of being led by the Spirit of God. And we broke that down to explain to us, or we were focusing on the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. How through the inner witness, the Holy Spirit leads us. And we broke it down into these eight facets of His inner witness, the way we could receive His leading. And this is just a quickly review. We talked about the quickening of Scripture, the assurance within, which is the peace within, the desire within, that is God creates that desire in our hearts, the knowing within, the prompting, the stirring, the foreknowledge, and the warning. That means the inner witness of the Holy Spirit can come to us in one or, in many, one or more of these ways. We covered this last Sunday. So in case you missed this message, just you can go listen to it on the website. Uh, the sermon notes are always are, are, are there. Now today we're going to take this further. We're going to add more to our understanding of how the Holy Spirit leads us. Another dimension. Go, go another level deeper of how the Holy Spirit leads you and me. But let's go back to the, that initial passage in Romans chapter 8, verses 14 to 16. We'll start there. Romans chapter 8, verses 14 through 16. Let's read it out loud, please. Let's read verse 14 first. Let's go. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God... These are sons of God. So here's what characterizes a son or a daughter of God. You are led by the Spirit of God. This is a privilege for every child of God. That you have the Holy Spirit to lead you. To guide you through life's journey. And we all have to navigate through all kinds of situations. Some are small, some are big. Got to make all kinds of decisions. In different stages in life. All of us. And the good news is, we are led by the Spirit of God. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. Or you could say it like this, the children of God, they have the privilege of being led by the Spirit of God. It's your privilege. It's for every child of God. And then he says in verse 15, For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. So he's telling us, look, the Holy Spirit who is in you, He's not the spirit of bondage or the spirit of slavery. He's not, so, he's not the one who makes you a cringing, fearful slave of God. But He's the spirit of sonship. He's the one who makes you a son or a daughter of God. And He fills you with this awareness that you are a child of God so that you can call God Abba, Father. So you call God, Abba, Father. How do you know that God is your Father? What has given you this confidence or this assurance that you are a child of God and that God is your Father? How does it happen? Well, next verse. Verse 16, he says, The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of the Spirit bears witness with our spirit. Bears witness means to speak, to give that conviction, 
to testify, to say something. So he's bearing witness. The Holy Spirit is bearing witness with our spirit. So let's say this together. The Holy Spirit is bearing witness to my spirit. So we said last Sunday, you are a spirit. So look at your neighbor and say, you're a spirit. So really the person next to you is a spiritual being. There are spirits all over this place. We are all spirit beings. But we all have a soul and we live in a body. God designed us like that. And so the Holy Spirit is giving that conviction in your spirit that you are a child of God. And we, we said it like this, pardon the repetition, but we said that you just know that you know that you know that you know that you are a child of God. So how do you know? Did God give you a birth certificate that he signed? God the Father? No. It's just that in your spirit, the Holy Spirit has, is bearing witness. He's, he's giving this conviction, this knowing that you are a child of God. God is your Father. You can call Him Abba Father. The Holy Spirit does that. And so we, we connected it back to verse 14 where it said that He's leading us. He's leading us. How is He leading you? He's leading you by bearing witness in your spirit. So that's the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. And then we broke that inner witness down into these eight facets of his, his working. He can quicken scripture. He can give you that assurance. He can give you that knowing. He can give you that prompting. He can give you that stirring and so on. He, he bears witness with your spirit in this manner. But now we're going to take it one level deeper. Just a little bit more. We also said last Sunday that when God created our spirit, the human spirit, He gave us faculties. Your human spirit has faculties. What do you, what do you mean faculties? The same abilities that your natural body has. It's parallel. The human body, as we understand, has a five faculties. You can hear you can see, you can feel, you can taste, you can smell. This is parallel. Your spirit has the same faculties, at least these five. You can hear, you can see, you can feel, you can taste and smell. The Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. So what taste is he talking about? He's not talking about natural taste. He's addressing the spiritual taste. The Bible says you and I are the fragrance of Christ. So there is aroma even in the spiritual realm. You carry an aroma in the spiritual realm. And when you enter, there's a spiritual fragrance you bring, the knowledge of the Lord in the spiritual realm. So there are these five faculties that your human spirit has. Now you think about, about a baby, when a baby is born, the baby or the child has these natural faculties. The child can see, hear, feel, and so on. But these faculties have to go through a lay learning and a training process. So as they say, dog, cow, apple, banana, that means the child has the faculties to see, to hear, but they have to go through a learning and a training process to recognize, to understand, to make sense of what's happening around them. The same is true of our spiritual faculties. You've got it. God created you spiritually. Your human spirit has the faculties to hear, to see, to sense or to feel, but they have to be trained. And God is using your spiritual faculties to communicate to you. He's speaking to you through those faculties that He created you with. 
is communicating through those faculties. But you say, God doesn't speak to me. He only speaks to so and so and so. No, 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 no. He's speaking to you. But your faculties need to be trained to recognize what he's saying. What's, what's he's speaking to you. And so today, we just want to encourage us in that area. First of all, to recognize that God is actually speaking to you through the faculties he's given to you. And here's how you can understand. Plus, I'll put in a little advertisement here. We do have weekend schools happening every month. <laughs> so come to the weekend schools. We'll, we'll get into all of these uh, uh, a little bit more. So, God speaks through these faculties. Now, just like we said, at this moment, at least two of your faculties are receiving information. You are hearing and hopefully also seeing what I'm communicating to you. And that's the way God speaks. Many times when He speaks, He uses multi-channel. He, he communicates through what we hear and see and feel. So His message is coming to us through all of these channels simultaneously. And so He put it all together. So, oh, this is what God is saying. But for the purposes of explanation, we're going to break these down one by one. We're going to talk about hearing, seeing, and feeling. We're going to talk about it one by one. But just remember, when God speaks, He he communicates through all these channels together. So you put that information, and I'll share one or two examples. They reminded me last Sunday. Make sure you share examples, okay? Otherwise, they won't know what you're talking about. So I'll share a few examples as we go along. So let's talk about the hearing part. What did Jesus say in John chapter 10 and verse 27? John 10. Verse 27. What did Jesus say? Let's read it out together. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Let's read again. My sheep hear my voice. You are God's sheep. He's our shepherd. And he said, you hear his voice. Every sheep will hear the voice. You can hear his voice. Now, remember, he's not talking about the natural. He's not talking about some natural voice. He's talking about a spiritual voice. In the spirit. He's going to speak to you through your spiritual faculty of hearing. And you're going to hear his voice there. He said you will. My sheep will hear my voice. So say this with me. I am his sheep. And I hear his voice. And for some of us, it's a statement of faith. <laughs> we haven't heard his voice yet. <laughs> but you're going to. Because you're going to learn to recognize, oh, that's my shepherd speaking. That's the Lord Jesus speaking by his spirit. In Revelation chapter 2, when Jesus is speaking to the churches uh, through John, he, he says, Revelation 2 verse 7, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who has a ear, what ear is he talking about? Not the natural ear. He's talking about the spiritual ear. Let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Not the buildings. You think God is speaking to the building? No. When he says churches, he means you. Let him hear. He who has a hear, ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the people. To the people. You are the church, not the building. So the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. To your ears, spiritual ear. How does this happen? Through your spiritual faculty of hearing, God's voice comes. And in the spiritual realm, words are transmitted without sound. So in the natural, words are transmitted normally through sounds. But in the spiritual, there's no 
spiritual vibrations happening and bringing the word. No, it's God's word imparted directly to your spirit. So a word, a thought, an idea just wells up in your spirit and comes to your soul. That is your mind. Your mind recognizes it. Your mind is a processing center. So God is speaking in your spirit. He speaks a word, a sentence, a, 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 an idea. He, he releases that information into your spirit and it comes into your mind and your mind recognizes it. And you're wondering, where did this idea come from? Maybe it dropped from the sky. Let it drop. No, it came from your spirit. But that's God speaking. A word, a sentence, a thought, an idea is being released in your spirit. It comes to your mind. My sheep hear my voice. And it happens in very simple ways, gentle ways. Let me give you one example. Remember back in, in January of 2001, now, in December of 2000, we had come back to Bangalore with the intent of starting a church and, a, and, a, and was going to work as well. And so, in January, I started the business, I started working, and we were also looking for a place to start the church. And I'd been away for some time, so I was not very familiar with the city at that time. And... You know, I didn't have many people to help, so I just kind of went around looking for a hall, an auditorium. I didn't know where to look. And so we started the search in December 2000, January, around mid-January. I was a little frustrated because I couldn't find a place to start the church. I remember one morning, I was just praying. I was praying in tongues, and I was talking to God. I said, God, I've been searching. I searched i gone around the city trying to find a place, a hall, and I think I just didn't know where to look, so we didn't find anything. So God, what do I do? Where do I start the church? Where do we start this, God? And I was just praying. And while I was praying, this one sentence, one simple sentence, came in my spirit. There was no lightning. No thunder, no earthquake. No, no hand came to write on the wall. None of that. It was just a simple sentence. And it was this. Start with what you have. Very simple. Start with what you have. I was looking. I was looking for this auditorium here, auditorium. Where can I find an auditorium? Where can I find a hall? No. This, the, and I was praying, God, I can't find a place. I've been going around and looking here, looking there. What do I do? Simple. Start with what you have. Came to my mind. So now I have to process it. So I processed it. Start with what you have. What do I have? I'm living at that time. Uh, we had just returned. So we were li living in my dad's home in Artinaga. So we're there. So I went to my dad. I said, Dad. Is it okay with you if we start the church in the living room of our home? I said, yeah, absolutely fine. Start. Go ahead. So, printed some handbills, went to every house in Artinagar, put it in the mailbox. You know, so it took some time to do a little bit of promotion. And within a month's time, we started. February 18th, 2001, we started All People's Church in the living room of my dad's house. So, how did God speak? Simple sentence. Start with what you have. So if somebody says, did you hear God's voice? Yeah, I heard God's voice. What did it sound like? Did it sound like a roar? Or was it like a lamb? Or what was it like? Well, just words. Just a sentence that came in my spirit. Was there any sound? No sound. Were there any vibrations? No vibration. Just a sentence. Start with what you have. God speaks. But we need to listen. Amen? 
Now, the problem is many of us are looking for some, something spectacular. You know, we're hearing for a voice that sounds like many waters, some thunderous voice. Thou, my beloved son, arise thou, a mighty man. <laughs> Go thou to the whatever. You know, and then we had to translate the King James to modern language. No, God speaks very simply. Very simple. And actually, God's instructions to us are so simple, sometimes we even miss it. We miss it. But His instructions are so simple. Do this. It comes as a thought, as a sentence, as an idea, something that just wells up in your spirit, comes to your mind as you're praying about something. So God, give me guidance. I, I need to hear you. Holy Spirit, what are you saying? And he just speaks into your spirit. Look at some examples in the Bible. You see, when, when the Holy Spirit spoke to Philip, he gave him a simple instruction. He said, go join this Chariot. He put it in modern language. Say, get into that auto. Go. Now, if it was you and me, what would we have done? So, God, who is in the auto? What is the license plate? What is the number plate on the auto? What's the driver's name? Give me three days to fast and pray. By the time chariot will be gone. Holy Spirit told Philip. Get into that chariot. That's it. That's the only instruction. Who is in the chariot? In the chariot is the treasurer of the queen of Ethiopia. Very important person. Holy Spirit did not tell Philip, Philip, when you get into the chariot, wear your best suit, make, your tie, make sure your tie is probably al properly aligned. I mean, and, and just make sure you wear the best deodorant you have. A smell good, look good, shave, please. And then get into the chariot. He didn't give any of those instructions. Just get into the chariot. And there in the chariot is this man who is the treasurer of the queen. And, and he's reading Isaiah 53. The Holy Spirit could have told Philip, Philip, before you get into the chariot, go read Isaiah 53 five times. Look up the concordance, study the Hebrew, read all the commentaries, then go. No, he didn't say any of that. Just go, get in the chariot. And there, he impacts the life of this Ethiopian who then takes the gospel into Africa. Very important work on a very small instruction. Get into the chariot. And you can see examples like this in the Bible. Small instruction, simple instruction, but a great work. So God speaks to us through our faculty of hearing. It comes through words, thoughts, ideas that just well up in your spirit as you're praying and asking God, for information. And, and, and I can just, you know, just think of so many, many times that God speaks that way. Let's look at the next one, the faculty of seeing. So when you're seeing, basically you're seeing a visual, you're seeing a picture. And, you know, in English we say a picture is worth a thousand words. So God is giving you a picture, he's communicating something to you. And this picture can come in so many different ways. A picture that you see in the night when you're asleep, we call it a dream or a night vision. That's a great time because your mind is calm, so God can speak to your spirit. A picture that you, that you see when you're awake, we call it a vision. So a dream, vision. And a vision that you see in your spirit, we call it an inner vision. That means you're seeing it in your spirit. And a picture that you, and what you see outside of you, we call it an open vision. That means God lets you see into the spirit realm or into other people. So that's an open vision. But what you see in your spirit, that's an inner vision. Okay? That's how far we will go. Don't get confused. Let's talk about the picture. That God uses pictures to communicate to us. So suddenly a picture comes up in your spirit. 
And then it comes to your conscious mind. Your mind is able to see it. But it came from your spirit. God is speaking. Now you're wondering about all the pictures you saw. Like, was that God? Was that not God? Some of it must have been God. Giving you ideas. And remember, God is involved in your everyday life. And I can tell you honestly, and I can sit down and tell you stories of how when I was trying to build software systems, building things for the church, building things when I was working you know, for other, uh, other organizations, solving problems, Insp inspiration, those, those pictures come, and how to design those systems, how to solve those problems, comes up in your spirit. They think I'm smart, not me. It's coming from my spirit. The solutions, those answers. So God helps us solve real world problems. So look at some examples in the Bible. In Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 11 and 12, God is speaking to Jeremiah. How is he speaking to Jeremiah? He's, let's look at this. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me. God is speaking. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see a branch of an almond tree. Then the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I am ready to perform my words. Now, all of you are seated here in the auditorium. Can you picture the branch of a coconut tree? Can you all picture it? Okay. Good. I'm not giving any meaning to it. I'm just saying. So sometimes God just gives you a picture. It comes up in your spirit. Now what's happening to Jeremiah? Now God, let me say this. God speaks to us in our context. He speaks our language. He understands Context, your context, my context. So God is speaking to Jeremiah in his context. If he was speaking to you and me, probably showing a banana tree, um, coconut tree, mango tree, trees that we are familiar with. But he's speaking to Jeremiah in the land of Israel. What's he familiar with? Almond tree. So Jeremiah, what do you see? I see a branch of an Elementary. God is giving him a picture. If, he, if God gave you a picture of a mango tree, imagine, suddenly that picture comes to you. It's coming from your spirit. But to Jeremiah, this branch of an almond tree has a lot of meaning. Why? Because Jeremiah understands what the almond tree represents to him and to the people. First of all, the almond tree was the first tree to blossom in the land during springtime. First tree to blossom, almond tree. Second, the meaning of the word almond means to be watchful in Hebrew, not in English. In Hebrew, the almond tree meaning of that name simply means to be watchful, to be vigilant. So in both senses, the, word, the almond tree, the branch of an almond tree has rich meaning to Jeremiah. And the message is this, Jeremiah, I am watching over my word and I will quickly perform it. The almond tree, first to blossom. Meaning of the word almond means watchful, vigilant. Jeremiah is getting the message. God is watching. God is vigilant over his word and he will quick perform it. Are you understand? So God is giving a picture and God gives a picture. He speaks to us through pictures. Another example, right? The next two verses. He says, Jeremiah, verse 13 and 14. And the word of the Lord came to me the second time saying, what do you see? Jeremiah, what do you see? And he said, I see a boiling pot and it's facing away from the north. And the Lord said to me, out of the north, calamity shall come, break forth on all the inhabitants of the land. So what do you see? A picture. There's a boiling pot. It's leading away from the north, facing south. That's a picture. A boiling pot, pot of boiling water. Through that picture, God is giving a message. 
Judgment is coming from the north upon this land. Are you understanding? So God speaks to us through pictures. Sometimes we think, oh, prophetic. It's so complicated. Oh, I don't know how he hears from God. It's like maybe he has a personal number. Who provides Airtel? <laughs> Divine numbers <laughs> from Airtel. <laughs> no, no, no. God is speaking through the faculties he's given to you and me. Through what we hear, through what we see, and through what we feel. And we got to capture those pictures, understand the meaning. And he's speaking in our context. So you interpret it. But what is God saying? He's showing you a picture. And similarly, through the sense of knowing or sensing. I'll talk about this and then give you one example. Sensing or feeling. Your spirit, your human spirit has the faculty to sense, to feel. In John chapter 3 and verse 8, Jesus said this. The wind blows where it wishes. And you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and from where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. You are born of the Spirit. And the activity of the Holy Spirit in your spirit is compared to a wind that blows. So when the wind is blowing, you feel it. You feel the heart cold, strong. The wind is blowing. You're, you're sensing it. You know the wind's blowing. And sometimes you can hear the sound if, if it's causing sound. But you don't know everything about it. You don't know where it's coming from. You don't know where it's going. But you know it's blowing. And Jesus said, so is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Meaning your life in the Spirit is like this. The Holy Spirit's activity is like this. It's like the wind blowing. You can sense it. You can feel it. You may not have all the answers to it. But you know the wind is blowing. The move, movement of the Spirit. You can recognize it in your spirit. And you can respond to the moving of the Spirit. And, and I'm just trying to, you know, list this out. The scriptures are given in the sermon notes. Here are some things you can feel. We mentioned some of this last Sunday. You can feel moving of peace. You can feel stirred. Acts 17. You can feel compelled. Acts 18. You can feel bound. You can feel restless. There's the bitterness or this agitation, this divine anger, a sense of agitation in your spirit. You can also feel like a, something clothing you, coming upon you. Many times the very presence of God is like that. Something just comes upon you. God is speaking through your faculty of hearing, through your faculty of seeing, through your faculty of feeling, sensing or knowing. God is speaking to you. Are you listening? No. No. I'll share one example. Uh, there's so many stories we can share, but I'll just share with you. This is very practical. This is very real. And, and whatever area of life you're involved in, you may be a school teacher, you may be a, you know, you may be a businessman, you may be you know, working in some company, whatever, whatever. This, this, this is real. You know, when you go tomorrow morning, when you go to your office, the Holy Spirit doesn't stand at the door and say, bye, I'll see you when you come back. No. He goes into your office with you. When you go into your boardroom or from wherever, he's walking right there. He's in you. And he's there to talk to you. To give you information. Of course you do your part. That means you prepare, you do what you have to do. Uh, whatever vocation you're involved in, you prepare well. But there is wisdom. There's the richness of the Holy Spirit in you. He's speaking to you through your spiritual faculties. And as you listen to Him, He's going to give you understanding. He's going to give you answers to your problems. He's going to help give you fresh insights, fresh ideas. He's, he's going to help you solve problems. 
the glory of God can be seen through your life. Are you with me? So, this is something I just want to share with us. I shared it in the earlier service, 8 o'clock service. I'll share it again here. Uh, 2020, there was a pandemic. Affected the world globally. Now, I remember 2020, we were hearing all these reports of, you know, what was happening. Uh, Of course, services, everything was closed. Everything was shut. But it didn't seem like we were affected personally, 2020. And then it seemed like early 2021, uh, we could reopen. So I remember in January of 2021, uh, those who were here in church, you might remember. I mean, we were meeting in a different auditorium. Uh, We decided to help other churches in our city. And so we set aside 15 lakhs of rupees and we distributed it to other churches to help them reopen, restart. That was in January of 2021. But then suddenly things went worse and we were back into lockdown again. And by the time we re- reached May of 2021, it was getting so close. People known to us were being affected. Things were like, okay, 2020 it was somewhere there, but now it's like... It's at our doorstep. It's all around us. People around us were being affected. And there seemed to be this sense of what is the church going to do in response to what's happening? How do we help our own people? How do we help our community? We can't just be sitting there and watching all these things happen. We need to do something. So remember, I think it was the month of May. And please forgive me if I get the dates and the numbers wrong. Don't say I'm lying. I'm not lying. I'm just recalling. And my memory may not always be right, but if you're interested, you can ask Geetu. She's got all the numbers. She'll tell you correctly. I think it's also available on our church website. So please forgive me. My numbers are not accurate. I'm just recalling something. So month of May, I remember we we said, look, as a church, we need to do something. And so we, 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 sent our, we called for a, a, an online meeting with all the leaders in the city. And there were about 70 pastors, leaders who came on the call in our city. And we had this, we had this uh, discussion online. What do we do? We know we have to do something. Things are getting really difficult. People are affected all around us. People in our congregations are being affected. We, we can't sit down and do nothing. We have to do something. What do we do? How do we do it? We were having this discussion. And everyone, you know, had a good heart of sharing their thoughts. But at the end of that call, we really didn't have an answer. We had different ideas, uh, but we didn't have a plan. We didn't have something that we could execute that day after the call. And yeah, we ended the call. Uh, There was no conclusion, no decision, no plan. And I was so disturbed. And I'm speaking for myself. I'm not, I can't speak for other pastors. I'm just sharing our experience. So please forgive me if, you know, I'm not saying what others did. But I remember that night, I couldn't sleep. I was agitated. I said, God, we have to do something. We have to do it now. We can't do it one year later. People are suffering now. We have to do something now. What to do? How do we do it? How do we get churches to work together? And we can't even meet. You know, we are all, everything has to be done online, practically, logistically. Things are so difficult. Uh, what do we do? And that whole night, I was restless. I was lying down, but not really asleep. And I was just praying, God, what do we do? What do we do? I don't know, God, but we got to do something. And that was that night. I remember when I woke up in the morning, As soon as I woke up, there was a clear plan. So, how did the plan come? Did Gabriel come with the scroll and open it? (laughs) No. It was through what I could see, hear, and feel. Through the faculties of the Spirit. I could see this whole thing. It was visual. And yet it was an idea in my spirit. It was very clear. And I knew what the action steps I had to take. So basically, as soon as I woke up, here were six areas we need to focus on. Pastors, 
and I don't remember all six, but I'll mention what I know. Uh, we have to help pastors. We have to help families who have lost, you know, many families have lost their, uh, the main breadwinner. So we help those families, help in the area of education because uh, people didn't have money they, to, to pay for education, to go back to college or school. Uh, we had to help communities, feed communities. Uh, we had to help mission hospitals. Uh, you know, we needed this equipment, especially those oxygenators and others, help mission hospitals. And there's one more, I, I, I can't remember. But there were these six areas, very clear. Set aside 50 lakhs. Get this work started. First, clear it with the trustees. Second, there were eight leaders, main leaders in our city who were on the call. Clear it with them. Tell them and ask them for permission. If they would give APC permission to execute this plan on behalf of the rest of the church. Because trying to coordinate across churches was so difficult in those days. It, you know, we, we couldn't even see each other. So I asked them for permission. So when I woke up, everything was clear. I had a clear plan. And this is what we're going to do. So immediately got into action. First, spoke to our trustee. Said, hey, we're going to... This, we're going to I, I didn't say that says the Lord or anything. Right? Just be normal. You can be normal even when you hear from God. Sometimes, you know, when you say, when God speaks, so thus says the Lord. And people are wondering, where did he come from? You know, just be normal. Speak plain English. <laughs> So God approved by the trustee. Here are six things we're going to do. We, can we keep 50 lakhs aside? Do this. Okay. Then send an email to these eight leaders who are our main leaders on the call. This is, we're going to do these six things. APC will keep money aside. I just want your permission to give us the permission to execute this whole thing on behalf of the rest of the church. Immediately. All of them said, go ahead. So by that afternoon, everything was clear. They're ready to go. Call for a staff meeting. Everybody got online. I said, guys, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do this thing, but we have to execute it right now. We can't wait. It's got to happen now. We've got to do this. And within three days, you know, we had got our website up. We got a little form for people to fill. And in my mind, honestly, I was just thinking maybe 100 people will ask for help and we will distribute 50 lakhs about 100 people. That was what I had in my mind. I thought that was going to happen. Now, my natural thinking. But our team was... Amazing, within three days, we, we launched this and people started responding. And I was seeing the numbers go, 100,000, 5,000, 6,000, 10,000. So we received 10,000 applications from all across India, every state. People were reaching out. So oh God, what do we do? That's when we, you know, I was doing a little math, the calculating. If we had to address all these needs, we need crores of rupees. We need like, and I was doing, just doing the math, I think around six crores of rupees. So we sent an email out to the church. This is it, would you give? And honestly, people gave. And within, again, I think within two months, I mean, we immediately, we, so the other big responsibility we had was we had to check every application. So we put together a team of 25 people, took, and, and, and across several languages, at least I think 12 languages, calling people in their language to, you know, uh, check, check the application, have they given us the information, uh, read out, you know, duplicates and whatever, all those things. So we went through that whole process and then money started going. As soon as we cleared, cleared the application, money started going. And within, I think that, again, I'm just recalling, but I think within a two month period or so, we sent out maybe four or five crores of rupees across our nation to help the people in their needs. Amen? Yeah, let's give God praise. You know, even today, when I go to different places, pastors come, they meet me and say, your, you know, APC sent money. And these are people we've never seen, but they are grateful today. So, this is real life. Does God speak? Yes, he does. He speaks through our faculties of hearing, seeing, feeling, sensing, and plus the others. But if we open up our hearts and say, God, speak to me, God, speak to me, he will speak. He'll give you ideas. It'll come as a thought. It'll come as an idea. It'll come as a visual. It'll come as a plan, as a strategy. He speaks. He imparts it into your spirit. And then you have to have the courage to go out and do it. When God gives that vision, He's going to back you up. It'll happen. 
Amen? So, you, in your life situation, you might be praying about things. It could be a small thing. It could be a big thing. But as you ask God, God, speak to me. God, show me what to do. He's going to speak to you through the faculties he's given you, through what you see, hear, feel. So pay attention. Receive it. Understand it. And then execute it. I want to just delve, touch worship team, please come. I want to just very briefly uh, delve on one aspect. We'll just skip now to differentiating between spirit and soul. So it's very important that we shouldn't confuse what the Holy Spirit is giving to us through our spirit and our own personal emotions, our soul. Don't confuse the two. Sometimes we, have, we get so emotional about something, we think that's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> You've got to differentiate that. Our, in, our goal is, I must listen to what the Holy Spirit is giving, speaking to me through my spiritual faculties and not confuse it with my own personal feelings. So three simple ways that you can distinguish it. Number one, validate or, with the Word of God. The Bible says, Hebrews 4.12, that the Word of God pierces to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and it is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. So it's the word of God that's going to help you distinguish soul and spirit. So fill yourself up with the word of God. Go back to the word. And the word of God will help you distinguish. This is from your soul. That's your own emotions. This is from the spirit. And this is actually what the Holy Spirit is saying. It's a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. So the word of God. Number two. Validate with the peace with it. When it's the Holy Spirit speaking, even if you're being stirred up about something, there will always be a sense of peace. And in this, this thing that I just shared with you, at one point it was overwhelming. Every one of us had to work hard. I mean, imagine processing all those applications and, and, and you know, all of that. They, emotionally, it was challenging, but there was a sense of peace. We know God's going to see us do this. And I remember reminding the team, hey guys, we are doing the five loaves and two fishes in modern times. What we started off as 50 lakhs, we're going to meet a need of, of you know, almost five crores or something, whatever that number was. It was literally five loaves and two fish in modern times. And so it's like, that was the vision and God did it. But there's a sense of peace. Third Validate by proving it out. Ephesians 5 and verse 10 says, Proving what is pleasing to the Lord. Prove it. Test it out. In my case, in that example I said, two proofs. One, trustees approved. Two, the leaders in the city immediately approved. They gave a go-ahead. Both sides gave go-ahead. Go ahead, do it. Prove it out. So don't be afraid of putting whatever you're sensing in your spirit to the test. Place it before people. Let them say, is it of God or not? Prove it. Proving what is pleasing to the Lord. Ephesians 5.10. So prove it out. And then you move forward. The Bible says, 1 Thessalonians 5, 21, 22, 23. It says, do not despise prophecies. Test all things. Hold on to what is good. That means... We are, we are open to the prophetic. We are open to God speaking to us. But we test it. We don't just swallow it blindly. We test it. And then we do what is good. Hold on to what is good. Amen? So, church. You are God's sheep. God is speaking to you. Through your faculties. He's not afraid of science or math. Hindi, French. Biology. Psychology. I don't know what you're studying. He's not afraid of business. He's not afraid of any of this thing. He, he, I mean, he's there. He's got an answer. He's, in, he's for your space, for your field of work. He can help solve problems. And he's speaking to you through your spiritual faculties. He can give you ideas. He can give you plans, strategies. I can just go on and on. Sharing how God's ideas are just helping us impact the world. Just amazing, amazing. 
And God wants to work through each of us like that. Through you like that. Amen? Let's rise to our feet, please. As we take these next few moments, as the worship team leads us, I want you to pray and say, God, speak to me through my faculties. I am your sheep. I want to hear your voice. I want to be led by the Spirit. In whatever you've called me to do, God, I want to be led by the Spirit. You may have decisions to make. Maybe they are personal decisions. Maybe there are big decisions in your workplace. Maybe there are big decisions about your career, about your future. All kinds, all kinds of decisions. But you've got God to guide you. You've got God to lead you. You just say, God, speak to me. Help me understand. And try to listen to Him. Try to listen to Him. Even this morning as we just take the next few moments, try to listen to Him.
Oh Jesus, you said, my sheep will hear my voice. And I know them and they will follow me. And Lord, we pray for each of us here, God, and those watching online. May we hear your voice clearly. May we learn and understand how you are speaking to us through our faculties, spiritual faculties. May we hear, may we see, may we recognize your moving. And God, in everyday life, in day-to-day situations, in simple conversations, in our times of prayer, in our times of play, in our times of interaction, may we hear from you. And may we communicate. May we do what you want us to do. Father, I pray especially for those who are in situations in life where they have to make important decisions in their personal lives, in their places of work. Father, I pray that they will hear from you, God, by your Spirit. They'll receive the wisdom, the counsel, the direction of the Holy Spirit. And do amazing things. Solve problems. Find solutions. Create new products. Design new things. Have great strategies. Great ideas. Bless the lives of many people. So work in and through each of us, we pray. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit continue with each of us always. In Jesus' name, everyone said, Amen, Amen, Amen. Thank you for listening. We trust this message was a blessing to you. For more free resources, including sermons, sermon notes, and books, please visit apcw.org. For information on APC Bible College in Bangalore, visit apcbiblecollege.org. Do remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the Apple or Google Play Store.